Hello Entrepreneurs Unity Group here. I'll discuss the American psychological thriller film, Gone Girl. Nick Dunn is a comp 40-year-old married to Amy. Nick appears odd on their fifth wedding anniversary. He's lost interest in his wife. Instead of buying her a present, he gets alcohol. His twin sister Margot bartends. She observes Nick's frown and asks why. Simply saying Amy triggers a memory to the night they met. Nick attended Amy's book launch party. Two strangers met and spoke about literature. Nick wrote for a modest men's magazine, while Amy was popular. Soon they strolled New York City's alleyways. Nick's charisma and excellent appearance impressed Amy, and he kissed her. Passionate love ended their night. Nick is telling his story when his neighbor calls to report his cat is outside. Nick brings the cat home. The front door opened. Nick phones Amy, but she doesn't answer. Eventually, he finds a smashed glass table. Nick is surprised and calls for aid. Detective Rhonda and her aide come shortly after and begin investigating. She finds blood in odd locations in the home. She inspects Amy's room and finds her books. Rhonda treats her disappearance as a high-profile case after learning she's a famous writer. Later, they all head to the police station where Nick gets tested. Detective Rhonda promises him they'll locate Amy. A forensics team is already at the crime scene looking for evidence and a news conference will be scheduled tomorrow to plead for aid. Nick thinks this humorous and compares it to law and order Detective Rhonda sees a red flag and starts questioning him. Nick doesn't know Amy's blood type, favorite meal or nickname. Nick just knows Amy had no friends and read a lot. Another flashback follows. Nick and Amy are celebrating their first wedding anniversary. They have ketuses in public and exchange pricey gifts. From here on out, their lives would only become worse. As investigator Rhonda searches for clues at the crime scene, pregnant Noelle claims to be Amy's best friend. She lives three blocks away and has known Amy for a year. Nick said his wife didn't have any friends, so Rhonda is skeptical. She sends Noelle away to question her later. She enters the Dunn home and hears from the forensic team that the kitchen floor was smeared with blood. Amy owns the entire house. Next day is the press conference. Since Amy is a prominent writer, hundreds of reporters have arrived, and the event is live-streamed. Nick's in-laws will run the news conference. Nick unwillingly says two phrases and smiles for a photo. He relaxes that night in his father's abandoned house. Detective Rhonda appears and was following him. Nick is furious so he escorts her out of the home and drives away. Next, a flashback shows the pair struggling. Amy keeps a diary now. The couple moved to Missouri to care for Nick's dying mother. Nick hasn't worked in months. Amy borrows from her rich parents. Nick, who isn't accustomed to being unemployed, wastes money on video games. Amy attempts to encourage him, but all their chats end in disputes. Amy disappeared two days ago. Her parents have established a fundraiser to find their daughter. Nick remains nonchalant. He takes selfies with guests. Nick stays with his sister Margot that night to avoid the cameras. He has no relief even there. Margot watches news reports regarding Nick's freewheeling attitude. Some doubt he said. Margot confronts her brother about it and Nick says he wasn't expecting it. He wants a peaceful night's sleep without being evaluated after two nightmarish days. Margot apologizes and falls asleep. A female leaps into Nick's arms after a few hours. Andy is his girlfriend. Nick doesn't worry about his wife's departure since he loves someone else. Is he responsible? During the night, the two get violent. Margot sees her brother concealing stuff the next morning and scolds him. Nick retaliates by saying Amy made him unhappy. She ceased caring for him, and even a single day was tough. Andy, one of his students, became his refuge. Margot cautions her brother about the authorities if they find out. She tells Nick he's in the news for the wrong reasons. Amy's journal shows that she desired a child with Nick to address their troubles. Nick was opposed. During an altercation, he accidentally wounded her by pushing her to the floor. Amy was upset despite Nick's apologies. She feared for her safety and sought a divorce after that. Nick wouldn't leave her because he wanted her parents' money. Detective Rhonda receives the blood forensics report in the present. It's Amy's. Nick gives a speech to a large crowd at night. Noel, Amy's best friend, yells that he's hiding something. She tells that Amy was six weeks pregnant when she disappeared. 
Marco Andy, Abby's parents are stunned. Nick's supporters turn against him, but cops whisk him away. Nick is drinking at home when investigator Rhonda shows him photos showing Amy and Noel were pals. She says his wife's blood is in the kitchen. Rhonda decides Amy was killed. She needs the body to validate her theory and jail Nick. Margot questions her brother about Amy's pregnancy after she leaves. Nick confesses he didn't know, Amy never wanted a baby. Detective Rhonda visits Nick's father's residence seeking clues. She finds Amy's half-burned journal, but no corpse. Then comes the vanishing. Amy is the culprit in a surprising turn of events. She painstakingly organized her husband's arrest. Nick robbed Amy's soul by lying to her, cheating on her, and stealing her dignity and money. We saw how she staged it. She befriended the dumbest neighbor and invited her home. Amy stole Noelle's urine sample to make bogus medical documents. She told Noelle Nick beats her nightly. Amy smeared two bags of blood on the kitchen floor for the crime scene. She swept it carelessly so police could discover traces. Amy left her false diary for the police. She was the aggressor, not Nick. Amy says she started plotting the night she caught Nick cheating. Nick also suspects his wife of framing him. Since he has no proof, he visits Tanner, the country's brightest lawyer. Tanner demonstrates fast thinking by counseling Nick. If he wants to win, he must win over the country. He defames Amy for it. Tanner says the first step is to locate someone she wronged and gather their testimony. Nick is in love. Amy dated New Yorker Desi Collins before him. Both had high standards, but Desi got possessive. When Desi didn't stop chasing Amy, she filed a restraining order. He still sends her letters. Nick visits the mansion from one of the letters. But Desi won't criticize his girlfriend. He still wants to defend Amy despite everything she's done. Amy has changed her identity and lives in a tiny town. She keeps to herself and avoids others. Some neighbors observe as she spills her bundle of cash. The same individuals assault her that night and steal her money. They didn't understand she was the gone girl from the news. Amy doesn't want to risk it, so she departs. She doesn't have a place to stay, so she phones Desi Collins. Next, Amy manipulates him at a casino. She claims that Nick was about to murder her at home. Now the public will view her as a coward if she returns. Desi buys her narrative and uses it to reunite. He takes Amy to his remote villa. Amy won't be discovered because of the cameras. Tanner encourages Nick to reveal his affair live on TV if the first plan fails. Everyone appreciates an honest man, therefore he'll garner compassion. They're shocked on interview day. Andy, Nick's girlfriend, tells him. Nick's in danger. Tanner says they're on the back foot, so going live would be suicidal. Nick tells him he'll be okay. Then he gives an emotional confession on the interview set. Amy, observing from the villa, is pleased despite others' doubts. Nick's words I love my wife forever touch her deeply. Amy is considering returning to her husband 21 days after her absence generated a national outrage. One issue. Desi wants to marry her. He sequestered himself in the villa with her. Amy knows he'll get violent if she attempts to escape. She kills two birds with one stone. She goes to the only location without cameras, the restroom. Then she fakes being tied up by leaving rope marks on her wrists. Second, she scars her private parts and records herself screaming. Later, she seduces Desi to make out with her. Amy kills him while he's preoccupied. Detective Rhonda has read Nick's diary and is about to arrest him. Everything changes one morning. Amy arrives covered in Desi's blood. Nick, formerly America's most hated man, is now innocent. The doctors examine Amy and find she was abused. Nick knows she's lying but has no proof. Amy later confesses her BS narrative to officials. She tells how her very possessive lover, Desi, held her prisoner for weeks. Amy again becomes America's sweetheart. Everyone believes Margot's sob tale except Nick and his sister. The drama ends when the couple goes home. Nick thinks Amy is a killer, but she says she only wanted to be with him. Nick is terrified to live with her after what's transpired. Amy threatens to ruin his life if he leaves. Nick understands he's trapped with a madman. He puts Amy to bed and locks the door from the outside, signaling he no longer feels comfortable in his home.